It is challenging, but at the same time, it's, it has its perks because not many women at that time when I began uh, were out there. So um, I was able to capitalize on that. Within five years, get signed with Golden Boy Promotions. I would be running up the mountains or the hills. And I mean, tears in tears, completely in tears because I allowed myself to get back to the place where I was from. They saw how much pain I was in, but I think that was necessary. I would not give if, if nobody believed in my dream. There's no way in how I'd, I'd go back. I can't, I have to, um, this will work out. Your winner by way of technical knockout, Maricela La Diva Cornejo. This is the real Maricela Cornejo. Everybody's got a story, but this is mine. This is the real type of former right here. This is the real Dustin Poirier. This is the real Michael Chandler. This is the real James, the Beast Wilson. Everyone has a story. But this is mine. This one's mine. But this one is mine. Body head. Roll. Turn. Top a big nigga down just like a tree. Let's go to work. These suckers are screwed, all of them. <laughs> if y'all want those problems, if y'all want that smoke. Step back. Right there. Over here. Right there. Go. Follow. My name is Maricela Cornejo. I'm originally from Grandview, Washington, and I am a professional boxer. I like the power on the right, huh? Lock the elbow on the left. Pat, pat. Right there, move back. Move, 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 right there. Pat. The reason why I box, um, truly right now, I, I, I absolutely love it. You gotta love this damn sport if you're gonna be boxing because your body's gonna hurt every single day of your career. Um, and I fell in love with it when I walked into um, Wildcard Gym about six years ago. I fell in love with that stank of like, boxing. Being a woman in boxing, I mean, it's tough being a male uh, as well. There's a, it's both ways, it's both ways. A lot of th people think of boxing and they think of, you know, a, a man boxing. Like a, that's just a man's sport. Um, being a woman, yes, it, it is, it has its challenges, um, but I think it, we have much more of a greater opportunity than men because there's so many men in the sport that when you're a woman, you stand out. You're able to stand out. Ready? Jab. Pop. Right there. Pop. Pop. Hands up. Go. Pop. So I, I was aware of that from the beginning. And um, before boxing, I mean, when I was younger, I tried out for America's Next Top Model. So. I knew looking like a female outside of, I, I love dressing up, I love wearing heels, I love wearing, dressing up as a woman, I, I love everything being about being a woman. Um, so I knew that would only help out with that, but you have to have some talent behind. You can't just say, oh, you know, it's a pretty face, but it, you go in there and it's just, it's embarrassing. It is challenging, but at the same time, it's, it has its perks because not many women at that time when I began uh, were out there. So um, I was able to capitalize on that and um, within five years get signed with Golden Boy Promotions. I think in the beginning, I wouldn't give, I, I would not give if, if nobody believed in my dream. Um, when it got difficult and when I was um, like tears and all was when everybody counted me out. And that was a time where I went away for some time and I, I, I mean, everybody counted me out. I was, uh, I was arrested and, um, and uh, I remember going back home and 
being in Seattle and um, I mean, I lost everything. I lost everything. Uh, it was about two and a half years ago. I lost everything. I was taking the bus. I was, um, I had nothing. And I knew everybody counted me out and it was just like, all right, cool, it's fine. But I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning cause I just couldn't sleep. I just couldn't sleep being in the situation that I was at. And I knew it was gonna take a lot of hard work to um, get out of that hole that I put, I personally put myself into. And, um, and I remember waking up in middle of the night or really, really early and listening to Eric Thomas. And I would go out and three, four o'clock in the morning because I just couldn't sleep. It'd be raining obviously in Seattle and super damn cold. And I would be running up the mountains or the hills. And I mean, tears, in tears, completely in tears because um, I, it was a bit of a fear that I allowed myself to get back to the place where I was from um, when I had seen a glimpse of the other side of you know, the sports world of traveling the world of, um, yeah, having cameras in your face to not having a car and taking the bus and, um, starting from below zero, I believe, because when you're trying, I was trying to come back up. So I think that's even more difficult than you starting because everybody counted, counted me out. Um, I think even my family, they just didn't want to see me suffer. You know, they, they wanted me to just live a normal life and not see me hurt because they saw <sighs> they saw how much pain I was in, but I think that was necessary. That was definitely necessary. So. There was no way in how I was gonna allow myself to go back. So, to me, I believe that was a defining moment on how I was gonna continue on. Why haven't I been told? Because I don't go to shit. Because I'm always in fucking camp. I don't know. You're gonna have to ask Tony about it. So okay. So Luis is gonna come to the fight too? I think so. He wants to. What about that? That that was probably not. <laughs> About two years ago, um, I was arrested and I was unable to um, move back to Vegas. That's where I was living at and they sent me back home and that's the time where everybody checked me out. I, I believe that I was, everything happened so damn um, the way it was supposed to happen. My brother had his baby at that time and uh, I was able to be there. She flatlined on us. Um, she, they brought her back. I would not have not been there for sure if, you know, I wasn't arrested, but uh, everything happened for a reason. At that time, I also was able to speak to my mom about me being sexually molested. That, that was one of the things that would block me so damn much and every single thing that I would do, I didn't value myself because of what happened to me. So I was able to finally speak to her about that, that, that happened to me when I was like five. And I released so much pressure off my own shoulders um, because I was, you know, back home and taking a really good look at my life and the strength that I would need to get back up. And uh, there's no question in mind that I was going to get back up. I, I mean, shit, I would get back up in 2.5 seconds, I'd, you know, cry, yeah, hurt, and then get up and continue to move on. It's just... It's just my mentality on uh, on life. Um, you know, worrying about whatever happens, but you, you life continues on, and um, that only strengthened me to get out of that dark dark moment of my life uh, when I was arrested, and where I knew that this was my last opportunity to get everything that I needed to get out of what was inside of me. Um, my name is Mari Cornejo. Um, I'm a professional boxer. And have, do you guys watch boxing? Does anyone watch boxing? Awesome, awesome. This is gonna be fun. All right, so I am um, signed with Oscar de la Hoya Promotions and I'm the 
second woman that was ever signed with Oscar de la Hoya. Doing what I do, going against the grain and not having kids at a young age and being, coming from a Hispanic background on how, you know, having kids and creating your family and basically now living for your kids and doing what society says is the way to live, you know, having a corporate um, job um, or even just a nine to five job. And um, do I think about being a role model? I just think about just be my true self. Um, and I know I have eyes looking, you know, at me at my nieces and nephew. I have what now 10 nieces and nephews. So it, I know they're looking at me and they go to school and they do tell me, you know, oh, my teacher knows you and all this stuff. And when I go there, they, the first thing they always ask me to do and is, um, can you pick me up from school? So I, at your age, I always thought I wanted to be a, um, a lawyer. And I always said, well, cause I like to argue. So I'll, I'll get paid to argue. The thing, my mentality at that age though, the important thing, my mentality at the age, I like to do something, let me find a way to get paid for it. I know I have a responsibility as in, I look at the responsibility more so than um, just becoming the perfect role model is not giving up, not giving up because that's more, that's more important to me to show them to not give up um, than to be perfect. I don't know if being per there's no such thing for me as being perfect. Being perfect is being yourself. Um, but I don't give a crap if people say, oh, you're getting old and you don't have a family and you don't have this and you don't have that. But I'm living out my dream that when I do, if you know God gives me the opportunity to become a mother one day, I have a fucking dope ass story to tell my kids that you know your mom did this and your mom was one of the first ones to get signed with Oscar de la Hoya. Like that's that's huge. That's huge. You're I, I created from nothing. I created something. I created my the vision that I had. I, I brought it to to reality and to show them that anything is possible and that's that's what I want to talk to my kids about when or you know if I'm able to um, become a mother one day oh fucking piece of shit ah <laughs> oh. I ain't even, I, I ain't even waiting for my ball. My, the motivation that right now that, I, that I've had is me missing so damn much of my family's um, moments, birthday parties, um, vacations, um, watching my nieces and nephews grow up. I've, I'm the only one, I come from a pretty big family. I'm the only one that um, moved away from out of the state and I've missed so much. There's no way in hell, I'll be damned if you know I'm out there partying and not uh, taking boxing seriously, taking the sport seriously because I'm too busy partying it up. No, I, that's my motivation to one day be able to take my entire family and create our own memories. So that's my motivation, my, my family. It's much bigger than myself. I absolutely love, <laughs> this is a part where, I, I love training so damn much. It, it's an addiction. To me, it's an addiction. I, I, I gotta wake up. Well, I wake up every morning and I have to get some kind of um, workout and it's walking, stretching. Right now I'm in love with yoga uh, while stretching basically. Um, but I went from one addiction. I was addicted to heavy drug, uh, like at age 19, um, I was addicted to meth. And that's a very, very hard drug. and. Uh, I went from one addiction to another. So to me, it's that adrenaline rush that I have a very addictive personality. Um, I get that from my mother. Um, so I, I overcame that. And uh, I think that also had a lot to do with um, my attitude and the way I see my life now is um, I hit my rock bottom at a young age. And uh, I overcame a lot of demons that, um, that a little punch in the ring, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. The punch in life, you gonna you're gonna show your true colors, you know, when life hits you. 
the reason why I work so damn hard because I I will not. There, it's it's I, I won't go back. The basics is what got me noticed. Me shadow boxing and you know with the lights off. Me running up the hills at night. That that's what got me noticed. So I can't forget that. Um, I think once we get to the spotlight and things start changing, opportunities start coming, we we lose that focus. And boxing is a, or any fighting sport is a definitely, uh, it's a very jealous sport that once you stop paying attention to it, you, you will get knocked out. Your winner by way of technical knockout, Maricela Ladiva Gordon.